What's up, everyone? You're listening to the beer edition of the Budgets and Brews podcast with Rich and Tony, where we discuss, chat, and ramble solely about beer this time. You can join us next week for our finance portion. In last week's episode, we talked about dollar cost averaging and why you should or shouldn't be doing it. So check that out. The link's in the description. But for now, let's splash right into Rich and Tony's Beer Review. Tony, what's on tap this week? Well, I'm glad you asked, Rich. Today, this week, we have the, uh, excuse me, let's see here. We got the Thirsty Dog Brewing Company, 12 Dogs of Christmas Ale, and this is a Christmas Ale, and it looks great. Um, so don't forget, we use a scale of 1 to 100, 1 being the worst beer we've ever had, and 100 being the best. And we are going to jump right into it, and we are going to start off by describing the bottle... The ABV and the IBU, which is a new one that we're doing this segment. Ooh. So we are getting really crafty over here, and we're uh, we're educating ourselves. Yes. So, a little bit. um, my first impressions of this bottle is I actually think it looks old. I don't know, like oldie, like an old like for old people. Which I don't know why <laughs> I think that, but it's just like it's the font. Well. It's like the font. It's like the graphic of it. It's like a yes. fire truck with 12 dogs. And in the back of the truck, it's like a bed. And there's dogs hovered in there. And then it says North Pole. And there's a pole right there with a the holly leaf and the balls and berries or something it's, like it's that. It's interesting, though, right? Definitely grabs your attention, like, with the truck and all the dogs sitting on the back. I think it looks pretty good. Um, it does have... 8.3 alcohol by volume, so that's the ABV, and as Rich mentioned, we're doing the IBU, which is the International Bitterness Unit Scale, and this ranks in at 21.5, and there's a whole way they calculate that, but we pretty much just consider it, like, how beery is it? And on the beery scale from zero to infinity, yeah. it's a 21.5. So, and we, Which will be cool because we haven't really measured that in the past. So now actually being able to see that number and then tasting yeah. the beer. Like I would have wished we would have done that so I can see like what 21 is. Is that, you know. Yeah, that really we have beer? no idea, right? Yeah, we this don't. So we're going to start basic. now. It's great. Uh, I do like the caps. Um, I know when I got mine, I got the six pack. Uh, mine is green and you have a red one. Mine's I think it's red. like yeah, all yeah. green. And there's like one red or something. I thought that's sort of yeah. cool. But like, like I said, if I was in the store and I was browsing, browsing and I saw um, this bottle, I would pass because if, I feel like it's not modern. It's not like hip it enough for me. School. Like it it's not cool. Yeah, school. that's what I'm saying. Yeah. It's sort of like the old school with the stuff. So I would I would pass, but I know how special this is to my heart now. Yeah. And I would definitely pick it up. Yeah, so this so, is an Ohio brewery and uh, I definitely know it's very and good. And it's a hard hitter. This is, you said 8.3%. 8. 8. Uh, 8. That's a big one. So let's go ahead and dive into the first category, which is going to be the pour and head retention. And we both have bottles, um, yes. and I'm going to go ahead and pour this into my glass. And if you're watching on YouTube, you'll be able to see the pour. Now now we, we actually can implement that. It's interesting how I have to pour it, but I hope I don't drop it. You'll be able don't to see the pour. It. You'll be good. Right I got my trusty frosted cheater mug. You do. So I'm probably we talked get about that on last week's show, actually. Yeah, we did. Don and I, uh, we, we talked about your cheater mug. Oh, did you? <laughs> yeah. It's, you got to have a good mug. So... It is here. a, oh, wow. This is a lovely pour. I don't know if uh, I'm going to hold it up a little bit. Yeah. There you go. If you can see that, this is just great. It was very fluid and smooth. Okay. And there's definitely, it was about a couple millimeters of head retention. And now it is gone. The retention is pretty much gone with yep. a small ring of foam around it. Uh, just perfect. I love the way it sits. So out of what is this? 15 out of 15. Mm -hmm. Wow. That was a great, um, I could have probably asked for a little bit more head. So I'm going to go with the 12. I'm going to go with the 12. 12 that was 15, great. That's a good score. Yeah. Yeah. So my pour was really good too. Uh, unfortunately my, my beer wasn't cold. My glass was chilled. So my head is almost gone. There's just a very little bit. When I did pour it, there was maybe a quarter of an inch to a half inch. And now it's just about like transparent. I can see the beer through the top of the, the head. So I would have liked to have seen more. Out of 15, I will give it a 10. It was still a good pour. All right. And uh, 
you have a fun fact for us. Oh, I do. Yes. So for the 12 Dogs of Christmas Ale, it is made with spice for the holiday with honey, cinnamon, ginger, nutmeg, and it's got Santa's secret recipe. And that's what we got from their website. So there's Santa's secret recipe in this Whatever beer. that is. We yeah. don't know, but <laughs> it is a secret. Know. But it's got some honey, ginger, uh, nutmeg, and cinnamon flavors. So that's cool. All right. And the next category is going to be the appearance and color. And this is out of 10. And I just love it. I mean, mine mm-hmm. is mine is br- reddish, bronzish. Like if it mixed on a palette. Um, yeah. Yeah. Almost like a little dark red. But definitely a hint of brown in there. The bubbles are just shooting straight up. A, I got a, a, um, a current sort of flow of bubbles yeah. going up uh-huh. there. It is perfect. And I still have that crisp layer of foam just around the top. And it's like, uh, it's not muggy or foggy. It, I mean, it's crystal clear right through it with the red tint. I, I love this pour. I'm going to give this a nine. Nine out of 10. That's a good score. Um, for me, this beer looks amazing. I mean... Like you said, it doesn't have any cloudiness. It's clear. It's got that amber kind of dark color. The stream of bubbles looking good. I mean, it definitely looks appetizing. I don't know if I'm just really in the mood for a beer right now, yeah. but this thing looks amazing. I'm giving it a 10 out of 10. I don't think I could Ooh, picture a better beer. I, I'm, I'm right there. I'm, I was so close to doing it. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah and, and here you go. Here's another fun fact we got for you. Mm-hmm. So the 12 Dogs of Christmas... When is it available? When can I get my hands on this? So October 13th through December 31st is the release date. It's out for, you know, a little over two months. Um, jump on it. And I know uh, oh, you have that next one. Never mind. I will not tell them what it comes in. That is the next fact <laughs> on there. So that is that's well, the availability but, for one but, of those. But that's important, right? Like it's an Ohio beer. If you want to try it, you probably got to yeah. go to Ohio. And it's only available for a little over two months, October 13th right. to December 31st. So you really got to get this stuff when it comes out. You know, it's obviously a seasonal beer. Right. Mm-hmm. All right. Now let's dive into the smell. And this is going yes. to be out of 20. This one is is amazing because before I even got to take a smell of this, just by pouring it, you can already get the aroma. So right. I'm going to go in for a big whiff. What do you think, Rich? I think it oh smells God. like sugar. It smells like brown sugar. Sweet. Very Just, sweet. Yeah. Do we I get don't the smell honey? hops. I don't smell no, like super. No yeah, I, I smell the subtle honey with mm-hmm. the sugar just sort of just sitting there. And it's. Now, now if I didn't read this on the bottle, I would have never have known. But I can kind of get the nutmeg. Do you get yeah. the nutmeg? Like you can. Yeah. You can really smell that. It smells very good. It smells like a dessert beer. It does. Uh, yeah. Cinnamon. I... Cinnamon is just sprinkled in there. Yeah. It's, it's a mixture of a sweet. It's a dessert. Very good smell. So I'm excited for this. So out of 20. With something like that, and I just love that smell. I'm giving it an 18. I mean, I'm I'm almost That's maxing good. it out. Yeah, I I think I'm a, I think you hit it perfect. Like this beer, it smells so sweet. It smells so good. I think I'm gonna give it an 18 as well. Like I I can't wait to taste. This and one thing. thing we almost overlooked. What's that? With those spices and everything in there, this is once again an 8.3 percent right. beer, and I didn't smell any alcohol. I feel like I could slam this thing. Just so, like I mean, I think it, it's just know? what a Christmas beer is supposed to look like and smell like. And yeah. let's hope taste like, right? Yes. I got one other fun fact for us today. Let's so, we it. got uh, the 12 Dogs of Christmas Ale is only available in a six pack. That's the only way you can buy it. Or if you get it on draft at a bar, at a lo- probably a local bar, you know. But that's the only two ways you can buy it. No 30 packs, no single cans, yeah. no nothing like that, you know. So. All right. Let's dive right into the taste. And this is out of 30, our favorite Cheers. part. Cheers, Tony. All right. You go ahead in. It's looking so good, man. I can't wait. What are you thinking? I just want to keep drinking. Mm-hmm. Oh, it could be a little bit colder, but, man, this is good. Doing two sips for that. Mm-hmm. That is great. It is so smooth. Like, it's really smooth. I reiterate, for an 8.3, super it does not smooth. Taste like it. No. Yeah. I mean, it feels like like a wave. It feels mm-hmm. like I'm in the ocean and a wave's coming and it just slides right down my throat. I mean, it's perfectly smooth um, and it's it's heavy. So it's sort of thick. It's not, you know, yeah. I feel like a little thickness. I wasn't even really thinking about that, but I'm like, oh, wait, it does feel a little thick now. Uh, but it's OK because the, the, the smoothness balances that out. But and it's, it's not, not like a strong bite in yeah. the throat. Like sometimes like with the heavier alcohol, it's almost like that fire breath. Now I do feel a small hint of that. 
after taste, but that is going to be for after for the aftertaste. Yeah, for next but one. in the initial hit, that shock, it's just goodness. I, I taste the cinnamon. I taste that nutmeg you're talking about. Yeah. I think I taste the nutmeg and the spices a little more than the cinnamon sugar honey smell that I originally mm-hmm. tasted. So there is that. It's now I wouldn't say deceiving, but more on the smell, it was like, oh, that honey and brown sugar and cinnamon. And now oh, yeah. it's like mm, the nutmeg and the more of the, the spices. Um, but I but good. What do you, what do you think out of 30? What do you think? And it makes me feel warm inside. Out of yeah. 30, <laughs> it was re- it was really good. I wish it was flipped. I really wish it was the more cinnamon, more of the sugar and stuff like that. But I'm not complaining about it. And before I, I, I dive into my score, here could be another uh, fun fact. And not a lot of like places do this or even know about this. But it's the sugar, honey, and uh, cinnamon rim. Have you had oh, that yeah. before? Oh, yeah. I've had the cinnamon rimmed. Uh, so there's a lot of places that will say, would yeah. you want that rimmed? And what they do is they take the cup and they turn it like upside down in some, a circle Especially of, you know, sales. yeah, mm-hmm. cinnamon and brown sugar and stuff like that. And honey is what they get it to stick and they rub it and boom, it's like amazing. That's where they probably do that to throw <laughs> in that stuff that you lost in the smell. But yeah. out of 30, I'm giving it a 25. It was great. I think 25 is an excellent score for this. I would have been higher if it was more weighted the other way, but yep. still a great score for me. Well, I think you brought up a good point. When you smell it, it's very sweet. Get a lot of that honey, a lot of that cinnamon. When you taste it, I wouldn't say it, it's heavy, but I wouldn't say if it's like syrupy or anything. It's just robust. Like the flavor right. is very robust. So I really enjoy it. It hits just how a Christmas ale should. And this is something that I will feel in my stomach after I drink a couple of these. You know, I'm going to be like, get out the beer belly, like feel a little <laughs> bloated. But the taste is amazing. Like, I feel like I could drink a ton of these. It's really going to be my stomach that probably couldn't handle it. Um, right. Out of 25, I mean, out of 30, I'm going to give it a 26. I thought it was excellent. Yeah. One of That's my great. favorites. And I got yeah, one a lot, quick. A lot of times I have Christmas ales or, like, even, like, winter lagers. Now, I know yeah. this is different than a winter lager, but it's just, eh, I don't it's know. It just doesn't serious. hit different. Like, like, the spices aren't ale. balanced enough. I don't know. You, you could tell it's an ale, you know. It doesn't yeah. have the super beery. It's very smooth, but, like, robust flavor. Uh, I got a quick fun fact for us. So yes. Thirsty uh, Dog Brewing Company is one of the oldest craft breweries in Ohio. It's dating back to 1997, which doesn't seem that old, but and it was opened originally as a brew pub. So they brewed and they had a pub. Now they've uh, expanded. I think they have three different locations. Uh, one is a brewery. One's like a tasting room and, and stuff like that. But And I'm wondering on those, like on one of the oldest, what is one of... Like, who can say that? I'm one of the – is it, like, only five people are allowed to use it, only ten? Like, I, I'm sort of just <laughs> curious. I don't know how they get yeah. that statistics because Great Lakes has, has to be a lot older than that. I think that was, like, in the 60s or something. I would love <laughs> to know that. Um, but, anywho, all right, the aftertaste. And this is going to be out of 25, and for this, I will also choose to have seconds. All right, let's go back in for another sip here. Mm-hmm. <sighs> Oh, that's so great the first time. Yeah. Even better the second. Um, the aftertaste for me, it, it, it's that heaviness. It's not, not super heavy, but it's um, it definitely sticks around. It's almost like something stuck to the, like, the t- roof of my mouth and the bottom. Like It almost coats my mouth of goodness, though. It's not awfulness. Yeah. And then after a while, I say that little, it's like a hiccup of fire breath. That comes up and it's like, ooh, there was alcohol in that. I, mm-hmm. I didn't taste that alcohol, but it's that after taste of it. It's not the initial. It's not in the smell. It's like a little small Charizard was throwing mini fireballs at you, and it just <laughs> one hit you in the throat. And it was a small one, it, you know, something like that. So I I enjoyed it. I, I wouldn't mind keeping it around for a little bit. So I'm going to go 22, 22 on the aftertaste. 22? Yeah, good score. I, I thought I think the aftertaste is very pleasant. Uh, it goes down very smooth, and um, like you said, it coats your mouth. You really taste it in your mouth even after you swallow the beer, after you drink the beer, and uh, a little bit of like a bite on my tongue. Like I start to get that eight point three percent alcohol a little bit, and it's it's like it's you really only notice it in the aftertaste. Um, but I think the aftertaste is very good. I think it's very pleasant. I'm gonna give it a uh, twenty three. I really like the beer. Okay. I'm gonna give it a twenty three. And uh, the last fun fact that we have, and I'm not 100% sure this is a fact, so I'll preface with that, but the brewmaster from Great Lakes Brewery, they left their job to go work for Thirsty Dog, and the legend legend has it that 
he also took the Christmas ale Great Lakes recipe with him over to Thirsty Dog. And so now it's really like this beer is a Great Lakes Christmas ale. Now, I don't know how true that is. I heard those rumors in the past, but that is the folk tale that we have there for you. So choose to take it with a grain of salt. <laughs> but for my overall rankings, and this is out of 100, is an 86 out of 100, which I thought was very respectable. That is a great, I mean, come on, it's like a B plus. So you don't yeah. get too much better than that. And for mine, I gave it an 87. Uh, definitely a great Christmas ale. One of my favorites. If you're ever in Ohio or if you're from Ohio and you haven't tried it, you definitely got to give it a go. And that wraps up this episode's B review. And if you enjoyed listening, we ask that you give it a thumbs up, subscribe or follow. And oh, yeah, don't forget to leave a review and comment on what beers you want us to review for the upcoming weeks. That does it. Cheers. See you.